Dzień dobry. Witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie na kolejnym spotkaniu w ramach cyklu Elementy Architektury. To jest cykl spotkań przygotowywanych od 2017 roku przez Instytut Architektury, Krakowską Fundację, którą mam przyjemność reprezentować oraz przez Instytut Goethego w Krakowie. Od pięciu już lat organizujemy wykłady, spotkania poświęcone architekturze, o architekturze, z architektami, krytykami, krytyczkami rozmawiamy na najbardziej aktualne, palące tematy. W 2017 roku tematem tego cyklu było, było ponowne wykorzystanie. Rok później dyskutowaliśmy o blokach mieszkalnych. W 2019 roku z okazji stulecia Bauhausu poświęciliśmy ten cykl właśnie tej konkretnej rocznicy. W roku 2020, kiedy trwała już pandemia, zaprosiliśmy Państwa na spotkania pod wspólnym tytułem Już wystarczy. Rozmawialiśmy o zieleni, jej powrocie do miasta, jej współczesnych sposobach wykorzystania. W tym roku ponownie mamy przyjemność zaprosić Państwa na dwa w tym roku cykle spotkań, dwie serie spotkań. Pierwsza tej wiosny nosi tytuł architektki. Mieliśmy okazję już tutaj rozmawiać na temat balu architektek, inicjatywy kilku polskich architektek, które postanowiły podjąć dyskusję na temat roli kobiet w profesji architektów i architektek w naszym kraju. Przed tygodniem mieliśmy z kolei spotkanie z kolektywem FEMARK, feministyczną inicjatywą z Berlina, która stara się na nowo definiować przestrzeń pod kątem potrzeb kobiet. Dyskutowaliśmy o toaletach publicznych, o sposobach budowania chodników w mieście i innych tego typu zagadnieniach, które bardzo długo były spychane gdzieś na margines dyskusji o wielkiej architekturze, a w rzeczywistości to one często są tymi najważniejszymi. Dzisiaj mam ogromną przyjemność przywitać panią doktor Helenę Huber-Dudową. Pani doktor Dudowa przyjechała do nas z Pragi, reprezentuje Narodową Galerię Sztuki w Pradze, gdzie kuratoruje główną wystawę poświęconą architekturze. Ta wystawa już w listopadzie, będzie, będzie można ją na nowo zobaczyć w nowej odsłonie. Już teraz zapraszamy Państwa do Pragi, ale zaprosiliśmy Panią Helenę do nas w celu opowiedzenia o jej wieloletnich badaniach poświęconych kobietom architektkom, które tworzyły architekturę w Czechach, w Czechosłowacji, budowały takie miasta jak Praga. Przypomnę, że pani Helena Huber-Dudowa studiowała na Uniwersytecie w Zurichu, jest laureatką licznych stypendiów takich organizacji jak DAD, Action Osterreich, International Museum Fellowship of the German Federal Cultural Foundation i wielu, wielu innych. Od wielu lat prowadzi, nadzoruje, kontroluje badania poświęcone architekturze. Obecnie jest to projekt zatytułowany Kobiety czeskiej architektury 1945-2000. Jest też redaktorką wydanej niedawno temu publikacji Modern Women Architect Projection and Reality since 1900. Świeżo opublikowana w Pradze książka do lektury, której wszystkich Państwa zapraszam. Tematem naszego dzisiejszego spotkania będzie być może najbardziej znana czeska architektka Vera Machoninowa, która w latach 60. 70. razem ze swoim mężem Wladimirem tworzyła grupę, ale no właśnie była chyba tą główną wiodącą postacią tego zespołu i czołową autorką jednych z najważniejszych realizacji czeskiej architektury okresu powojennego. Helena, the floor is yours. Wykład odbędzie się w języku angielskim. Thank you so much, Michal, uh, for this kind introduction. I have to say I understood most of it, which uh, and uh, I thought it was really kind. Um, 
Yeah, uh, I'm really honored to be here uh, in Krakow. Uh, it's my second visit and uh, I really enjoy being in the city uh, with this beautiful river uh, and architecture. Uh, during my first visit, we, uh, we had a wonderful guided tour in Nova Huta uh, and uh, we also yeah, had uh, different walks uh, in the city center and uh, and uh, yeah, I'm quite happy to be presenting in this uh, amazing uh, uh, museum. Uh, so, and on the topic of women in architecture, which, um, which we are actually um, uh, working on uh, as a research project now in, uh, in Prague, because we somehow found out that we have only like two, maximum three well-known women architects. I mean, Viera Machoninova is uh, one of those uh, better known, uh, but uh, but uh, after one and a half years of research, uh, we discovered about 200 names uh, of women architects who are actually, you know, mostly unknown even to us, who are have always been concerned with history of architecture. And I think it's about time because uh, the materials are disappearing and the women are actually also disappearing um, uh, because uh, there was a strong generation of uh, women who studied uh, after the World War II. Like, I mean, prior to the World War II, there were like pioneers, uh, I would say, like, you know, some, some women who, uh, who actually crossed the border and uh, really went to this like technical uh, subjects, to the technical schools, mostly not so much academies because um, you know, academies, they were uh, really like a master uh, studio based um, um, uh, education where women did not have access quite, uh, quite long, but the technical schools uh, with a, a greater amount of, of students uh, also made space for women in architecture. And uh, when you look uh, look at the technical schools, uh, it was also women who were the first ones to, you know, gain like uh, doctorates or become professors and so on. Um, yeah. Mm, maybe I will get slowly to Viera Machoninova. Um, yes. Um, so, um, she, she studied at the Technical University in, in Prague, uh, and then she started uh, in, a, in the state, uh, state office, uh, as you probably know. Already in 1949 in Czech, uh, all the private uh, architecture offices were united into one huge, I mean, uh, master office, uh, where all architects uh, were uh, were working and then they had like regional offices. So there was an office in Prague, there was an office in, in Brno and, and so forth, in Olomouc. Um, and Dria Machina was uh, working in Prague. She met her husband um, and, uh, and they were like working really closely together um, in, in a pair. Um, uh, what I want to say is uh, going back to the research project, we are actually like uh, have uh, two main questions uh, and I can also, you know, uh, say on the case of Vera Machunova what we are trying to do. Um, so uh, if, if you look at the canon of, of architecture, um, it's mainly like men, you know, and the modern architect as a genius. And, uh, and through our research project, we are cry trying to uh, sort of, um, define this canon in a different way, in a new way, uh, by, for example, also drawing in uh, the interior works. Like, for example, in our collection in the National Gallery, we only have buildings and the interiors are like completely divided. We don't have that. And uh, on the other hand, you know, often the buildings are divided, uh, are designed from the, the entire building until the very detail by one architect. And there is no reason why, uh, why these, uh, these parts of the design should, uh, should be missing. Um, and that's, that's uh, the, our first uh, major, uh, major task to uh, redefine the canon and maybe to ask what is, uh, what is the proper architecture and how you can uh, look at architecture in a different way in order to include like women uh, into 
because I mean, if you look at the careers of women, you know, they were often um, having like difficulties in their careers, uh, and uh, due to I mean motherhood and uh, and um, yeah, mostly and and you know and and different caring jobs, so uh, they were not uh, able to um, to participate uh, at an architecture office. I mean, from seven till eleven in the evening. But still, uh, their work and their creativity did have uh, did did have a, a value. Uh, so that's what I what we are trying to emphasize: that it's not only like large buildings and complexes, but also like smaller things, uh, which you can see also as as a as a creative work of art, uh, such as interior landscapes or you know all kinds of um, uh, designs. Um, uh, of, of interior products and so on. And that's how we kind of try to uh, extend the, the, the typical or the classical uh, definition of architecture. And the second one is that we are actually asking where, why are these women uh, missing from the architecture discourse? Um, because it's, if you look at the statistics, you know, uh, from in, in the Czechoslovakia, there were about, like between 1950s and 1980s, there were about 30% of uh, women architecture students. But uh, when you look at the, mm, at the offices, at the uh, office representatives, at the representatives in the, um, in the Union of Architects, uh, if you look um, at professorships, uh, there were not so many. There were no 30% of women, you know. So uh, there's a dis disproportion, and we are asking, uh, where are these women, and why they are not uh, being in those in those positions? And uh, yeah, and and we are looking for partly sociological reasons. We are doing uh, interviews, and also we are researching magazines to find out. I mean, what's the reason why these women were disappearing? Yeah, so, so that's the, the introduction and about our main, main research questions. Uh, coming back to Vera Machoninova, uh, there is, um, yeah, there is, uh, for example, she is an exceptional case uh, because quite often we found out that there is a pair of an architect and a woman architect, and basically, uh, if you if you uh, make it short, it's two in one. So basically, there is a man architect and a woman architect, but the woman architect takes care of the children and also helps out her, his, uh, her husband, you know. So you have the capacities of two people, but only one represents then the final, and, and, the, he, and only the men are usually credited with the work. I mean, Mira Makunyinova, she was such a strong personality uh, she, that she managed to, to pro profile herself as, as an independent artistic, um, uh, artistic personality. But uh, I mean, there is vast amounts of of architects who are so well known to to the Czech audience, you know, and they often had a, w uh, her, her, their wives were architects, and they are not known at all. Uh, and and it's uh, you know you can almost count on on a on a very uh, well known name that there is a, a, a woman behind, you know, because it's like two in one, like, you know, he was uh, basically able to deliver uh, even more uh, than other people because, for example, um, these men when then were then in like um, uh, higher positions and they had a lot of administration jobs and sometimes the creative jobs were doing these women, for example because they were at home, they had time to, to draw or whatever. Yeah, so, so, but yeah, so actually this is, um, this is the illustration that's also what Vera Machuninova always says, that uh, they were equal uh, as for authorship, but it was the man, her husband, uh, who was actually dealing with the, uh, with the public um, negotiations. So he was the one who would go to, um, to the investors, um, and uh, who would uh, who would really um, uh, discuss um, discuss the money and uh, discuss uh, the founding of of their same private office, which they founded in 1967. And he was always uh, the head of the studio as a as the main representative. And Vera Machuninova uh, said 
about herself that she was mostly uh, at a drawing table, you know, like <laughs> looking at the materials, doing the, the detailed design, the interiors. Um, she was also concerned with aesthetics, with constructions. Uh, yeah, so she, she was really a very strong personality. And I think like Mahoninovi, they managed to, uh, yeah, to really uh, maximize the potential of this like pair, um, woman and man architects. That's why they uh, they managed to become so so well known. Um, uh, so this, um, uh, as I mentioned, they uh, in in the sixties. So so there were like the state uh, projection office founded in nineteen forty nine. Uh, but uh, with the dead hand of the nineteen sixties, uh, Mahuninovi were able to. Uh, to found the semi-private uh, architecture studios uh, within the alliance of architecture offices, which was run, and uh, there were like offices Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Omega. Uh, one was run by Mahoninovi, other one by Prager, uh, another one by Schramek, and it was like, uh, they were concerned uh, mostly with competitions. Um, all of these studios who uh, were founded, uh, they already had their um, really important uh, competitions, working on embassies, uh, working on, on prestigious hotels. Um, yeah, uh, Karl Prague was working on the Federal Assembly. So, so they were like uh, really huge projects and they managed to uh, get a certain independence from the state-run state, state -run offices. And um, yeah, and, and they were uh, basically forming their own like design collectives. Um, this uh, lasted unfortunately only quite uh, quite a short time uh, until 1971, um, where uh, this like relatively free uh, free uh, atmosphere was again like cut down, and it was uh, actually also a turning moment. For Mahoninovi, because after the um, invasion of the Soviet uh, army in Czechoslovakia in 1968, um, they uh, they refused to comply uh, with with the invasion, and then uh, they didn't enter the uh, restructured Union of Architects. And then when you were not a part of the Union of Architects, it meant that you were not able to take play uh, take part in competitions. Uh, you were not able to be published. Uh, in, in official journals, uh, you were not able to be uh, exhibited or anything. So you actually were cut from all all media, and you were supposed to, you know, disappear <laughs> basically. Um, but uh, they were allowed to to work on their running projects. Uh, it was the competitions that they won uh, at the end of 1960s, and luckily uh, they were allowed to. Um, uh, yeah. To uh, to f uh, to work uh, in the same in the same collective uh, and finish these projects, which I will be working about uh, speaking uh, about later. But uh, but here you you see I think it's Vera Mahoninova. It's not clear. But uh, in after finishing the um, embassy in in Berlin, Czechoslovak embassy in Berlin, as as I said, it was not allowed uh, that the embassy is published. Only in the in the magazine Architect 1978, uh, there was a short uh, like construction detail um, of the embassy, and uh, on the on the main page uh, there was like a, a, an image of the woman <laughs> uh, by the drawing board. Um, and I guess, I mean, you know, looking at uh, Vera Machuninova, I thought it might be her because like uh, like one or two pages after that. Um, Mm, it was the small detail of the embassy, which actually cannot be, could not have been published, and and also this image, it doesn't say who is in the in the in the image because it was like officially unacceptable. So yeah, so um, and it was a break for their career, and they were not allowed to really project until 1990 or only small project like small small houses. Um, here is the overview. Um, so, so unfortunately, at a lot of the things uh, stayed on paper. Um, here is the overview of their works, uh, 1965 till 1984. They did a lot of competitions. 
um, I will be speaking only like three main brutalist works, uh, but the, an important realized uh, project is, is the House of Culture in Yehlava. Um, that is uh, that is from, I mean, second half of the 50s, so it's more classicist, uh, but you can see then in the interiors um, that it's then, I mean, more reduced, that there is no uh, like social realist decoration because like socialist realism um, or the so-called Sorella was the official style of Czechoslovak architecture until 1956, I would say. Uh, then they were taking part in a competition for the Old Town Square, um, the Hotel Termal, I will be speaking about in detail. Um, it's, it was the one major project which basically launched their career. Um, they were doing a competition for the Federal Assembly, um, which won Karl Prager, they uh, received second prize. Um, then the House of Culture Dlabachov, which is a, an interesting like pyramid structure, uh, unfortunately also unrealized. Institute of Computation Kotva Department Store, I will also say something more in detail. Um, Embassy of the Czech Republic in Berlin. Um, and then they were doing the master plan for, for, um, for a metro station, uh, Budjovicka, uh, with I think four buildings and only one, the, the department store or center of home, home design uh, department store was realized. Um, and then there was Techno, te uh, Teplo Techna Hotel, but it was a very small assignment and uh, it's, uh, it's very much um, uh, within the decorations. Um, it's, um, and, and the colors is uh, influenced by, by postmodernism. As I said, um, well, as I said, a lot of things uh, unfortunately uh, stayed on paper. So uh, they were, uh, but but uh, from those uh, those projects that were realized, uh, you can see a great emphasis on on the interior design. Um, and uh, what I would like to maybe like um, say in terms of uh, Machoninova is that. Uh, Mm, that they are their concept of interior design is uh, is an um, is an entire environment uh, really like a composed environment of uh, um, of colors uh, and forms um, and also artworks uh, which you will see in detail um, uh, later on and uh, and I think that's uh, one of the really important things uh, that is very different to modernist designs uh, because the interiors of Machoninovi is uh, quite colorful, you know, it's not the transparent design of the international style. It's very colorful and uh, it, it uh, marks a change from, from international style to, to brutalism. Um, so Hotel Thermal, uh, the, the competition took place in, um, in 1964. Um, uh, it was uh, it was a huge competition for a spa and a festival center uh, because there is the Karl uh, Karlovy Film Festival uh, taking place um, in in Hotel Thermal until now. Um, it's it's now currently controversially discussed because it's it's under reconstruction um, and. Um, Vera Mechuninova is always defending her authorship rights, so she's having a lot of controversies uh, with the investor, which in this case is the Czech Ministry of Finance. So it's it's a public matter in a way, <laughs> and um, yeah, and 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 it's uh, it's a really uh, dominant structure. It still has this uh, modernist uh, comp uh, composite volume of compositions uh, with a tower and and a pedestal. But there is a huge volume of cinema of cinema, uh, of cinema um, uh, can deliver it out of, of the volume. So so uh, the the orthogonal structure is uh, is then becoming uneven through these inserted uh, through these inserted uh, moments. That you see the the drawings by Viera Machoninova. It's the cinema and. Um, and and um, like an in between story uh, where you have a lot of passages. 
here you see the, the plan, uh, what I was speaking about, uh, that you have like three circular volumes, uh, which kind of, uh, in the model you see the tower and the pedestal, and then the third, three circular volumes of, of the conference halls and the cinemas, uh, which are kind of like disturbing like the, the orthogonal um, construction. Um, uh, it, it's a it's a steel frame um, and uh, and these like round um, round halls are hand delivered. Uh, uh, the the largest one is 40, 40 meters. Uh, and except for that, uh, there is also um, a spa and a pool uh, um, above above the main hotel, which is uh, quite nice because the hotel is connected to the pool and uh, to the pool and to the spa so during my last visits i wanted to always take um, take um, a, um, a bathing suit and you know go swimming which i didn't manage but next time i will do it um, and um, yeah and, and and from the pool you can see kalvivari like river valley and uh, and you can see like that there is much difference between like you know the modernist uh, tower and and pedestal uh, because the they they sort of copy the landscape of the of the river uh, Tepla, uh, which runs through the valley uh, through through this like composition of the circular uh, circular volumes mm. This is how it looks like. This is the pool I was speaking about. Um, the main, the main uh, festival uh, hall and center, and yeah, and here you can see like the sort of a Japanese garden that runs uh, along, um, like a like a, a special landscape, uh, landscaping art that runs uh, along the um, the hotel. Um, yeah, uh, so, so this is something I was actually speaking about, uh, that is this like uh, design environment. Um, um, she was uh, designing uh, like the, uh, it's, it's quite colorful and it's, it's interesting uh, how she uses the colors of the carpet, uh, but, but then on the, on the walls, it's just like washed concrete, so it's quite raw. Um, that's quite interesting that they are using like other materials and uh, the same materials in the in the interior. Um, and here, I think it's quite uh, nice that there is like a like a hydroponium or like a, a special vitrine for plants, uh, which I. Uh, which I found quite intriguing, and it kind of supports <laughs> my idea that there is there is an interior landscape, which uh, uh, which I kind of uh, relate to Werner Panton, uh, for example, uh, who was using a lot of colors, uh, and uh, one of his most like uh, um, fantastic landscapes were um, were exhibited at Visiona. Uh, Design festival in Cologne in 1970 and 1968. So I, w I think uh, in this like uh, handling of color and in the handling of like interior uh, emotions and how these emotion uh, how these colors uh, emotionally work and affect people. I think Mahuinova was really quite close uh, to Pan Werner Panton. Uh, this is the restaurant with uh, special lamps. I forgot to say uh, these lamps are by glass artists um, um, uh, Libensky and Brichtova. Um, these uh, these uh, smaller lamps on the tables are by Rene Robicek. And again, you have these uh, um, you have these plants, uh, plants, um, and special chairs. You know, like for every venue or every interior. And again, the the walls are washed concrete, uh, and for every venue, they were designing special sets of of chairs. Uh, this is the conference hall, which is uh, which is quite until now a very dense uh, atmosphere, like red atmosphere, very intense um, with uh, steel tube uh, uh, steel tube chairs, um, and that is still until now like those interiors you saw before 
they were refurbished, but uh, yeah, but but um, <laughs> but the walls and and the ceilings uh, they still exist. Uh, and here you see the different types of furniture. Uh, it's my photography, so I'm sorry that it's not so professional. Um, so there is like this high um, armchair, like a wing armchair, um, which was in, in red and in blue. And then the club chair you saw, this lo uh, low, low, arm, uh, low armchair, which was uh, designed for this foyer. Um, then there were chairs uh, with these stitched bands, uh, and they were either with four or six or eight stitched bands. Um, and it's, it's quite a futuristic design. And uh, these were used in the restaurant, in the cafe. These smaller ones were used in, uh, in the cafes. And, um, and these uh, with the uh, with a, a side arm, uh, um, they were used also for the projection rooms, for the, uh, for the screening, uh, screening um, um, spaces, cinema. And as I as I said, there is a lot was a lot of glass art. There was a glass fountain uh, by René Robicek, which is still there, but only well, I mean, fragmentary, um, not complete. And this glass chandelier, uh, which still exists, so yeah, so we are quite happy <laughs> that uh, um, that the director of the Karlsbad. Um, <laughs> Karlsbad Film Festival is always like keeping an eye on of, of, uh, if this chandelier is without dust, you know. <laughs> so it's the first thing when he comes to the festival opening, you know, he's controlling like if this chandelier uh, has no dust. So I thought it's quite funny. Um, now we get to uh, the second project. Uh, it's the Kotva department store uh, in Prague. Um, so, so until 1960s, uh, there was like not a not a qu proper supply uh, with consumer goods uh, in Czechoslovakia. Um, there was only one department store uh, with like this full sortiment, and it was from uh, 1939. Um, and then, uh, and then it was decided at the end of 1960s um, that uh, there will be, um, and there were like two small like. Uh, Houses of fashion and a house of, of food, whatever, at Wenceslav Square, but uh, they were smaller venues. And one, and and as as this consumer uh, um, consumer um, habitus or this consumer um, yeah um, lifestyle was changing, one wanted to have like this full assortment, huge uh, shopping centers. And uh, that's what uh, Kotva and Mai by the renowned uh, architecture office Seal, uh, it's also at Národní třída in Prague, uh, one, uh, one competition for. Uh, Kotva is very uh, quite, quite, um, quite unusual uh, in, its, uh, in its structure because it has a, a honeycomb structure. Like a, a like a hexagonal structure, which quite nicely fits to the irregular uh, plot uh, of the department store. Um, you see here the facade uh, to to the to the main square. Mm, this is the real rear facade. Um, uh, so it was uh, mm, um, the the well, I was. So, so this is basically the structure, uh, right? Um, it's hexagonal structure with like a hexagonal ceiling, and it's supported by by concrete uh, concrete beams mm, with uh, struts. So there are six struts, and these struts are supporting these uh, uh, these hexagonal ceilings. Um, and I mean, it's it's being. Um, in connection, or it's being perceived in connection with this metabolist um, architecture. Uh, well, I mean, it's not like uh, a cellular structure because uh, these uh, mm, these prefabricated uh, beams or columns are enable enable to have like a, a floor plan that is um, undivided. So, like to me, um, the Mahoninovi they understood uh, how this consumer uh, behavior uh, works, 
And because, I mean, in the 60s, they were basically like uh, traveling a lot. Uh, and it was possible in the 60s. So they they were quite well acquainted with cin uh, how to how to build cinemas. They were also quite acquainted uh, with all kinds of uh, buildings, also brutalist buildings. Uh, so so they were li really like keeping up uh, with uh, with what what was going on behind uh, the kind iron curtain because it was not iron curtain. It was more osmotic and yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so yeah. So it was not uh, strictly metabolist uh, because there there were like these open floors. Uh, this is how it looks looked like. Uh, it was a very very prominent uh, shopping center, uh, which was you know the competition was in 1969, and um, it w it was finished in 1975. But uh, but Machunyrovi were not even um, invited for the opening, you know, because then by then they were not welcome in the official official scene, but as I mentioned, they were allowed to finish their commissions. Mm. This is the, the back uh, of, of the building. Uh, the facade, uh, facade is, um, um, is covered uh, with Atmofix, um, which is a special material. It's a type of cotton, um, but uh, but Vera Machuinova was developing it uh, with uh, a special like research institute for the protection of materials uh, because at that time the research institute was working for some kind of covers for electric wires uh, for Siberia <laughs> and uh, uh, and um, Vera Machuinova because she was in contact uh, with these uh, you know institutes um, then they developed like a material that they would use as cladding for their different. Um, Different projects. Uh, another thing, um, another thing is the uh, st concrete staircase, uh, which is also uh, quite a typical moment uh, for for Machoninovi. Yeah, so so it it does have uh, quite quite an appearance uh, in the in the city, but uh, uh, but due to its uh, variation of the shape, uh, it's uh, possible that it fits also in. Uh, here you see the the interior space. As I said, uh, it's open plan, but uh, they were not allowed to design the interiors, probably due to costs, uh, and they were they had to use the the standard uh, furniture uh, that is used uh, as a modular furniture for um, yeah for um, shopping. Um, and here you see, for example, uh, a drawing because she was really like uh, drawing everything into detail. This is the children's corner, um, and this kind of also supports my idea of the landscaping, <laughs> because uh, she was like uh, designing a, an irregular podium of like 30 centimeters, and these cubes, uh, which were as um, as cupboards uh, for uh, for toys, and and there was. Uh, um, and there was also a blackboard, and the children could sit there or they could play, and uh, yeah, and, and it was quite a uh, quite a nice environment. I don't know if this children's corner was uh, realized or not, but um, but I thought um, it's it's quite interesting to see how she was imagining like uh, spaces for children because it says a lot about how she was also thinking about like design and uh, and how y you you should behave as a small child or in which environment you should uh, be living. Um, and the third project is the Czech Embassy in Berlin, um, which Vera Machuninová said uh, it's her like most, uh, most important project. Um, and it was designed, um, it was one of the last competitions they were allowed to take part in. Um, and we are actually currently having an exhibition there on the embassy because it's uh, up for re reconstruction also. And there was a huge debate starting already 2015. There was a lot of talk about tearing it down and building a new embassy because uh, obviously it's a huge building. And uh, as the GDR embassy was really quite huge, there were, I don't know, 200 uh, 
or between 200 and 300 persons in the embassy working. Uh, nowadays, it's only 40, and it's not even Czechoslovakia, it's only Czech, meaning that there is even less people, and, uh, and uh, heating and air, co air conditioning is very ineffective, you know, and you can't open the window, so it's really hot in the, um, in the summer and um, cold in the winter, and yeah, it has all kinds of problems, but still, like, the design is so unique um, that, you know, I was also part of the debates and trying to get this embassy into the media and, and so on. So in the end, uh, the ministry said, yes, okay, we will reconstruct the embassy, and and it seems that now uh, the reconstruction plans are being worked on. It's it's done by the daughter of uh, Vera Machoninova and uh, her husband, uh, who are both architects. Um, yeah, and and let's hope uh, for the best. But I mean, with the rising costs, um, the budgets were done. I mean. I think like three years ago, maybe. So, so now it's obviously a question if you will be able to refurbish the whole thing or it, just parts of it. Um, so it, it's it's a huge question how it will turn out in the end. Uh, here you see the section. Um, uh, there you can see the the atrium and um, and also there is a drive-in street <laughs> in in the building itself. Uh, and there is a huge auditorium and a cinema in the center uh, of the of the building. Uh, here you see the atrium. Atrium is the situation. Uh, the atrium is not used uh, at the moment, and it would be nice if after the refurbishment uh, one could actually use it. Mm, it it's, it's a square, uh, basically, uh, and and there is uh, one floor between like uh, first and third floor and then there is uh, which are representative spaces and uh, between the fourth and seventh floor uh, it's uh, it's mainly uh, it's it's mainly offices so here you can see that they were actually like keeping the the representative uh, spaces in in these huge capsules um, and then the office floors are really not that, um, not that um, mm, uh, emphasis. Don't have that much emphasis. Um, what is important to say is that at the moment that they were uh, like building it, uh, this was uh, a location near the uh, Berlin Wall. Uh, there was the so basically there was nothing, you know. So it is really like a self-contained building. Um, where there's uh, really a wasteland, you know, and the building one, and then a, a few of rests of um, of some like houses. So, uh, so it really gained a nickname like UFO or like Ramshiff Enterprise. That's how we uh, called our exhibition because it was such a such a strange area. And I really, until like late 80s, like the embassy was designed 70, uh, and until maybe 1985, 1989, there was nothing around and uh, only the construction of like blocks, blocks of flats started in about 1985. So it was as if there was a spaceship really landing on, on, the, on the ground. Here you see the drive-in. It's, it's, it's a square which is divided uh, diagonally, and uh, now, unfortunately, the, the, the ground floor is inaccessible. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's really strange that the cars are really like driving uh, through uh, through the building, you know. So when you have like an ambassador, you know, then you have a ramp, and then you <laughs> drive across the ramp. Um, uh, yes. Um, here is it's now uh, how it looks uh, nowadays. Um, it uh, yeah, um, so it's it's considered as one of the like most. Um, it's considered one of the m best examples of brutalism in in Berlin. Uh, and as I mentioned, there is a discrepancy between what the what the heritage protection and the experts think and what the ministry usually thinks, you know? So um, there's a question of if this uh, building should be heritage protected or not. And it's quite a popular building actually in, in Berlin. We found out that there is quite a lot of people going into this exhibition and there is a lot of interest. 
So uh, and there were a lot of like publication and articles on on the on the, on the exhibition. So yeah, well, let's hope that uh, there will be a reappreciation of the building also in the ministry. But like sometimes, you know, the ministry is in Prague and they they don't feel so connected to to these different venues. So it's 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 a difficult uh, situation. Um, so here you see the main contrast. Uh, Machuinove are all, uh, often working with the contrast of the like uh, dim exterior or like the brutal exterior and the colorful interior. Um, uh, here you can see the detail of of the grid, um, which is a constructive grid. Uh, it also has like a, like a construction which you can see on the third, third floor in the main, main cinema hall in the auditorium. And uh, there are these consoles of the construction grid um, uh, that you can that protrude to the facade. So it's, it's a very interesting construction which uh, between the first and third floor, it has a span of 14 meters uh, and it's strengthened. Uh, by this uh, grid, uh, concrete grid that is cast um, in in situ, and uh, yeah, and and in the higher uh, upper floors, it has only the span of of seven meters. Mm. Uh, here you see the interior design. It's the conference halls uh, with uh, glass chandeliers by René Rubiček and his wife uh, Miluše uh, Rubičková. Uh, and uh, and lamps by uh, Libensky and Brichtova. Mm. So the glass uh, art is always quite present, uh, or often quite pre present, in the designs of Machoninovi. Here you see the the chairs. Um, uh, these are the photos. Uh, I'm working with uh, uh, with a French Berlin. Um, Photographers. I mean, like they are based in in Paris and Berlin, and we've been collaborating like since a few years. And now uh, we managed to shoot a, a photo series, a second one, in the embassy. And it's it's they these photos are actually part of the exhibition in Berlin. So um, uh, uh, along with the plans I was presenting to you, and we also have a model. And uh, these these photos are like semi uh, staged. Uh, that uh, we were trying to give quite a lot of attention to um, to the chairs and to the, the design, um, so that uh, yeah, all of its distinct features uh, come in to to the fr up uh, to the front. Um, this is uh, the reception, one of the reception halls, um, and they have like so these these halls have sliding doors. Uh, and basically, you only have like glass walls, or you have uh, uh, like a wooden cladding. Like uh, it's a nut, uh, nut wooden cladding. Um, you, I will I will show you uh, later. But there is no walls, which is quite interesting. Mm, this is the the ground floor where you can see actually the drive-in ramp. Um, and all of these like colorful, colorful, uh, circular, um, the circular conference halls. That's the same as the hotel thermal. They really have quite often, like working with uh, with a geometric uh, grid, uh, uh, and then they have like some elements which are like disturbing this grid. And uh, these are like circular forms quite often um, of these conference halls. And you can see here that the outside and the inside is kind of connected uh, uh, through these large windows. Uh, these are um, <laughs> special conference halls, uh, which are in really bright uh, metal cladding, like it's yellow, red, and orange. You saw at uh, the previous uh, image. And really, like when sitting there, you could, you know, see that it's it's like some kind of an uh, experiment of how uh, how the color really like affects your um, uh, your behavior, you know, like so I I mean, like sitting uh, for uh, in 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 a negotiation for two hours in this red room, I think uh, you would really be affected, uh, like eventually, you know, and uh, yeah, and and in this yellow, you know, you could feel like. I don't know, being at, at a police department, you know, with like bright lights and everything. So yeah, so I think um, 
uh, they were doing it like on purpose, you know, like selecting colors and, and, and testing out uh, how these colors uh, uh, really affect uh, people. Mm, I was speaking about this wooden cladding, uh, so there is a bar uh, which was uh, also this walnut wood, has this walnut wood cladding, um, and it's, it's the interior walls. They, they're quite often also sliding walls. Um, And, and the lamps by Elena Kropova. Um, yeah, this, this is, they, they don't stand there like this normally. <laughs> it, it's like staged. But uh, yeah, we wanted to have these lamps, like, you know, to have their own uh, presence. So that's why we, uh, we put uh, and ordered uh, these lamps like this. And I think this, that's my last slide. Um, so I would thank you for your attention. I hope you uh, enjoyed the lecture. And yeah, if you would have any questions, then I will be happy to answer. Right, I have one, if I can uh, ask you. So what happened to the couple after they were banished from the public, I don't know, floor, as I may call it? Yeah, well, um, they, well, what happened is that they were like really intensely published, uh, like in all uh, like professional journals, like every competition was published and then like suddenly there was nothing, you know, they completely disappeared um, from the public sort of media. And as I said, for example, they were not invited to the opening of their own works of the department store, Kotva, you know, um, and then, it, because it was like a very politically charged uh, department store, you know, it was like the shopping window of socialism. We have here now like a new department store uh, look. Uh, and, and even the construction was done by a Swedish company, you know, so it was like really strange. And, I, and, and uh, the construction was done by a Swedish company and, and the architecture was done by architects who, <laughs> who were actually banned from the public debate, you know. And then, then there was like these politicians like so sh of, of the government, you know, or of, of the normalization government, you know, like opening the department store as the prestigious and representative. Um, yeah. So I think it was quite absurd. And, um, and they were still um, able to work on these competitions they won. So it was the, the embassy, the hotel terminal, and, and I think also that's the reason why, uh, why it took so long to them, because they knew that they can't really, um, you know, get more commissions or any new commissions, so that uh, they were like working uh, these buildings through into the really very detail, like it's, it's, it's extreme in this hotel terminal. Uh, I saw you like different types of uh, of armchairs uh, and for de designed furniture, but there's even more, you know, I, I just didn't put all of it. And, and for every restaurant, uh, for every lounge, for every bar, you know, there was a different type of seating furniture and they really had like the concept thought through un until like the very smallest detail. And they said they were also going to, and they, they were quite perfectionist, you know, so they were going to the construction site like twice, once or twice a week, you know, and and uh, and I, I saw once uh, like um, a construction site document, you know, where like Mrs. Mahunyova was saying, no, you have to redo this and that and that, you know, so they were like really, uh, uh, really very, um, yeah, uh, very difficult, I mean, you know, and uh, they really wanted to have the best, uh, the best results. But, uh, but I think it was, uh, it's, it's a great, it's a shame that uh, she, they couldn't design anything, uh, anything else. I mean, and no, no other projects. Um, yeah. uh, but then, then after in the 90s, she, she received uh, uh, different like uh, state prizes and the prizes of the architects chamber and so on. So she is uh, um, an important personality. Um, yeah. We, but. Yeah. Any more questions? I would like to ask about uh, Hotel Thermal. I have heard uh, several years ago that it will like reconstruct it. Is it true or not? Uh, is it Thermal? 
Yes, yes. Yeah, it's under reconstruction uh, at the moment. Ah, okay. Yeah, and um, this year they are reconstructing the uh, the representative spaces and the the hotel rooms are already refurbished and there was uh, a lot of um, controversy uh, about that the original interiors are not being restored um, and uh, and that for example yeah like the the restaurant or the conference hall I was I was showing to you I don't even know uh, when I was in Hotel Thermal and like looking at the storage rooms, like at these different types of chairs and so on, I just didn't see this like uh, steel tube, tube chairs. And I don't know where these are, you know, they somehow disappeared uh, because I didn't see a single one. And, and I mean, you saw the conference room and, and there was like vast amounts of furniture. And yeah, so it's, it's really, <laughs> it's really difficult. Uh, yeah, but at the moment, I mean, there was um, there was a director of the hotel which, who basically like hated 60s and 70s architecture, and that's why it was so controversial. And uh, Mrs. Machuninova and her um, and her um, and her granddaughter they, uh, and grandson they were um, really com complaining and having a lawsuit about the authorship rights uh, and like saying we are not informed. You can't do this. You can't do that. We have this like authors authorship license. So uh, yeah, and now uh, the director changed, and there is one uh, director who has more appreciation for this 70s um, architecture, also brutalism, and yeah, I think he's uh, trying to um, to like uh, put it back in state how it was, um, or yeah. So let's wait for the for the result, you know. But yeah. Um, yeah like definitely like this uh, in these spaces there is a lot to do i mean it, 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 like some of these uh, glass glasses uh, or like these huge shopping windows are covered with posters you know uh, there was a casino <laughs> really in the hotel you know so like not very uh, not very nice um, um um, nice functions, you know, and so on. So, yeah, uh, I think the 90s were really tough <laughs> for the hotel, you know, B because you had a lot of foreign tourists, n tourists, you know, and like uh, in Karlsbad, there's also a lot of Russian tourists. Uh, so the uses were also quite controversial, I would say. Uh, is there a plan to expand embassy program so you know this big volume fits something else because you said that uh, this is too much space for uh, recent let's say needs for the embassy so what is planned there yeah um, they are i mean for some time uh, in the past i mean with embassies you always have like this special security uh, regime uh, so for us it was like really terrible to do this exhibition because we were not allowed uh, access to like basic plans of the furnitures of the chairs and you know so but in the end we kind of managed but uh, but it was not easy uh, and um, with this all security precautions um, uh, there was uh, only at one time because the embassy has two separate uh, entrances. There was like the Max Planck Scientific Institute, which hired these rooms. And for the future uh, plans, um, the embassy should uh, like the upper floors, which were offices um, and now are empty. Uh, they should become flats for the embassy um, uh, yeah, stuff. So yeah, so so there will be some some changes. Um, there will be like four. I mean, as far as I know, um, there will be some changes to the to the floor plans uh, as well. But uh, but uh, I mean, the, uh, it's it's said that it won't re uh, affect the representative areas I was showing to you. So yeah, we hope that uh, it won't. You remind me about my first visit to Obchodni Dum Kotwa 33 years ago. I bought the Depeche Mode album, Music for the Masses. I don't know if I still have it, but I still remember that. Uh, I have a question concerning the uh, 
furniture and lamps you presented, uh, are they today copied by some company, by the design industry in the Czech Republic, or it is still undiscovered? Yeah, no, no. Well, I mean, no, but they are really like, uh, it's insane now how, um, uh, how expensive they are. <laughs> I mean, it was now uh, like this, this uh, high armchair from the Hotel Thermal, it was sold for uh, online for, I think, 6,000 6, euros. So, <laughs> so yeah. So it's, it's um, yeah, and then there is this authorship, and, and there's now at the moment no copies produced, but uh, yeah, but um, but it's becoming like a, this like design designer furniture uh, that is uh, being like valued in a way. It sounds like a business opportunity. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it could be uh, an option for maybe the um, Mrs. Machuninova and uh, her granddaughters, or you know, I mean, I think that would be very popular. So yeah, it's true. Are there any more questions? Um, was the brutalism architecture in Czech Republic and Czechoslovakia very popular, or the Mahuninova and her husband architecture was um, exceptional? Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I think um, it was quite uh, quite extensive, um, but like not in this like typical like um, brutalist like. But which you associate with the uh, like um, concrete, like the core, uh, the beton bru. It's uh, not that much. Like with Mahonyovi, you sometimes see these concrete cores, uh, and you see, for example, these uh, surfaces uh, of this like washed concrete um, in the interiors. Uh, but it's more um, softer, I would say. Mm. And um, yeah, sometimes they also, these structures fit into the city. So um, they are a part of the city and it's not so, uh, you know, like single standing volumes, even though they often um, have uh, like a, an appearance. Uh, but uh, yeah, but, but they are all, all uh, often treated with a variety of materials like ceramics on the facade, you know, so it's not like, super like concrete monsters, but <laughs> it's, it's more like, uh, yeah, there has a like finer designer touch to a lot of those buildings. But I mean, you could still say, or I would still say it's brutalist because it has, uh, I mean, if you read like Rainer Benham and his like definition of brutalism with this like figure uh, or like some kind of a silhouette and uh, the, um, the visible structure uh, or construction, and the use of like uh, raw materials, I think uh, these these buildings often really uh, comply with these like you know um, uh, with these lines uh, of thinking and um, yeah and and I think really these uh, architects so there are also other like Karel Prager who is well known and but also Jan Schramek uh, who are do and Karel Filzak also. Uh, who were doing a lot of uh, embassies uh, in London or in Stockholm or in Geneva, in, in Cairo and New Delhi uh, or in Brazil. And yeah, and those are like really concrete uh, thing, um, structures. But uh, often in Prague, uh, yeah, they are not that uh, uh, raw, I would say. If there are no more questions, I would like to express my greatest gratitude for this honor that you accepted our invitation and decided to come to Krakow. So thank you so very much for this beautiful lecture. <laughs>